All righty, everybody, welcome back once again. You're listening to the Entrepreneurial Web. I'm your host, Jeremiah Fox, with my guest, CEO of Odomont Foods, Andrew Suzuka. Andrew, you with me? I'm with you. Yep, here I am. Did I read that you, you're from Brooklyn originally? From Westchester County, so Westchester. I've been, uh, actually Putnam, but it's not cool. Yeah, and, and how long have you been in Brooklyn for? Probably 20 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. cool. Bit. In this um, neighborhood, too. Yeah, yeah, no. So we've been here for 15. I know it's the kind of place where you just don't leave, right? No, you, no, you got the playground, you got Della, you got you got everything you need. You got the juice box, well, good to go. It looked it looked quite different 15, 20 years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. Now they now, were, you know, they cleaned up the park, they cleaned up the playground and everything, and it's I, uh, I got nice nice spots popping open. And there were there were far fewer businesses. I mentioned this earlier, and it's definitely a concern of mine because I've seen so many places, you know temporarily shut down uh especially you know establishments like retail and which you you know you're getting a good a good uh insight into right now with your placements um but service as well a lot of these places it's going to be quite difficult for them to to open the doors back up because my guess based off of my experience i've lost businesses before i <laughs> see i've temporarily closed businesses <laughs> just <Right. laughs> they're still temporarily closed um and and you know it's tough because your bank account goes to zero real quick you like just paying your staff and like the few people you don't that that would like actually successfully sue you <laughs> you know if they did <laughs> right. you, you you try to take care of them and then you got you got nothing left and then to open back up it's like well then you yeah. got the backlog the backlog of rent or leases, right? Yeah. You couldn't, yeah, you just, just thought you couldn't pay because yeah. cash business. And then it's like, right. like, unless those are forgiven, which, you know, it'll be interesting. I mean, it's, you know, there's a lot of great places out there. Um, and it's, but it's, it's a little bit of Darwin in a way too. Right. So absolutely. You know, which is why my ass has been open every day because I'm just, <laughs> right. I'm, like, right. Man, I'm like, my yeah. confidence level is so high. Yeah. Like I yeah. definitely need the adversity checks. But sometimes I'm like, Jesus Christ, yeah. man. Like, you're you're going to be on the Galapagos Island. You're like one of yeah. those, you know? <laughs> I, as soon as this went down, I was just like, if we close, that's it. Like, there's no coming back. There's like, there's no coming back from the dead. Like, if you, if you, if everything goes dark, that, that's just it. So my, 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 you know, inspiration every day. And, and, you know, it's amazing because we've gotten, we've gotten traction every day. Of course, we're operating, you know. Yeah. At, a, at a huge, uh, a, 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 just a fraction <laughs> of what we used to do, but, mm -hmm. but it's enough, you know, it's enough to keep doing it every day. And it, and it gets me excited for the next day. And I was like, every day I come in and I'm just like, the phone's not going to ring. I'm like five minutes later, ring, ring. And I'm like, all right, folks, here we go. And, yeah. And, and you'll be one of the, you know, and then the ones that, that, that's, that, that can, can weather it. Right. Yeah. It's like, they're going to get smashed as soon as like everything starts to start to yeah. come to reality. <laughs> then you're going to be on that flip side of like, Oh yeah. Right. Like exactly. That's the part that I'm like, I'm afraid for right now. And then I'm afraid for that because I know what that looks like. Cause it's happened yeah. before. There's going to be an extreme. There's going to, it's going to yeah. go from one side to another. And, and quickly. And very quickly, really quickly, especially when it's like, the, again, the Darwin thing of like only yeah. if you left, it's like, where are you going to go to eat? Where are you right. going to go to hang out? Where are you going to go to like just be normal and human again? Right. And especially if you've been like, I've been, you know, in everybody's face, I'm, I'm staying super active in terms of social media. I'm outside every day. I got the door, even when the weather's bad, I got the door open and I just like bundle up and I'm outside and I'm talking to people. Just and so just, they know that you're alive. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And so I'm, I'm, there's a slight concern that the, uh, you know, that the, the, the business district's going to go back in time to where it was like 15, 20 years ago when there were very few places around, which, which is unfortunate. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time helping this, this area in particular grow to the point that it is. Um, so I'm a little, I'm a little edgy about that. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, you, you, you got your product in a number of different places and yeah, I think it, what's the, what, what do you, what's the forecast for you? What do you think? Yeah. I, I mean, I think there's a lot of amazing brands that were even going to come out of their shell come out of their hiding at, at yeah. like Expo West and it, and it completely sucks that they're not going to really right. see the light of day. Like companies that, um, these retail stores, what they do is they'll do what there's called category reviews once a year. Right. And so Whole Foods did their category review in October, I want to say, and that's your one chance of the year to have your product seen by those buyers and they either take it or they don't. 
you know? And if you miss, and if you miss that, right, you're, you're out until 2022, right? Or 2021, whatever it is. And I feel like a lot of places that missed, you know, because of what's happening in the, in the industry, in our industry, the food one, is that category reviews are being put on hold, right? Mm-hmm. Kroger's was put on hold. We just, I just flew out and saw them in January. We had a really good meeting and they were going to tell us in April what's happening. Then we got word a few weeks ago, all the reviews are on hold. Like they, they weren't going to change anything. And I'm like, ah, oh, all right. I mean, we saw the Whole Foods and other whatever stuff happening. But then we got the email this week that like, actually it's back on. But like, so I feel bad that there's a lot of, you know, great brands and people really trying to make a difference. Like being those Davids against the Goliaths that we're trying to be, that yeah. are just not going to get their moment, you know, on the podium to like really be seen. Right. And I think the expo scene is going to change tremendously. Like, do I want to go to a show now and shake hands and soapbox with 10,000 people? Like I used to love that. And I still right. love it in my head. I mean, it's like, you get to go there. We go to this dietitian show, which is called Fincy, which is just crush. You get like 10,000 dietitians. Like, and it's just like people that matter that are yeah. helping people get healthier. They have some of the coolest and most important jobs in the world. Right. Like, how, what is that going to look like this year? Is Expo East going to happen? Like, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit like this, you know, the whole thing's not going to go away. The flu doesn't go away. You know? So it's like, I don't know. It's going to be weird. So I think overall what's going to happen. I mean, what's the impact on like these other brands, we're going to lose a lot of like a a lot of like, like a lot of people with some huge potential and the ones that can weather it, you know, are going to be able to take on those, those junk brands that don't even care, you know, and, and, we're just gonna, and we're gonna just keep on, you know, we're just gonna do our best to crush them. Yeah, that's good. I, you, I basically feel the same way. I mean, it's unfortunate that this is gonna claim a lot of really honest, hardworking people. Um, that it's just inevitable. Um, but I do think you're right that the people that are left over are gonna have a, a certain level of resilience, especially if you, you have a solid brand, you have a product that you know is good for people and and there's a heightened awareness towards that now and now that would be a good opportunity to go head to head with some of the yeah i don't know how do we what do we the big, call the big boys the goliaths <laughs> you know, yeah without naming the names but yeah, yeah exactly it's, but it's just fun. it's subpar food man it's just like that, like you said it's dead food i say that all the time you go into a grocery store and i'm like it's a bunch of dead fake food there's no nutrition yeah. in this yeah. i can't turn that label it. around you know you turn ours yeah. around and you see like, and you're going to see 20% fiber. That's not, oh, the other thing was really interesting about food. And I, and I, I mentioned this to some people and I don't, I think it's something that, that many people don't realize you can make a nutritional label for like a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, right? You can even make it for free. You know, yeah. you just plug your stuff into it. But I'm like, wait a minute. That's not like, but you cook it. It changes what's in there. It changes the ingredient, the, the, the vitamins and everything. So this label costs us $3,000 a skew because we send this to the labs to get fully mass spec. Mm-hmm. What's the A, the B, the C, the fiber. So when we say we have 20% daily fiber, we have 20% daily fiber. There's no BS there, you know? Yeah. And so like, I know that that's no nutritious stuff on the market, not just because I'm pretending or, or it's, it's theoretical. No, we actually tested it. Then the crazy part is this was the extra motivation, right? Was this was like just another midnight nugget that I, you know, that, that just a midnight fire or whatever was we lab tested other stuff. People that said, oh, we have, you know, 20% vitamin C or 30% this. And not that they're taking that angle, but I would just grab sauces and we spent, what does it cost to, to test like a vitamin C? 60 bucks or whatever, you know? Mm. And we would send that stuff in. And we'd say, instead of 25, it was 0.25. I'm right. like, whoa, whoa, yeah. are you kidding me? Like, maybe we need some, some shelf space. Maybe I, you know, should make a phone call, you know, like, but it's like, <laughs> You know, it's like you just see, and that just pisses you off. At least it pissed me off to see this stuff that, like, I thought I was grabbing that be- before I was on this side of the fence. I was on the other side. I was a pure consumer. I was never in the food manufacturing space, right? And as a pure consumer, I would take things at face value a little bit more. But now I'm like, you know what? And I'm in marketing too, but I would even still get tricked with the marketing. But you figure you turn a label around, you should be able right. to. Try. Like, no, you don't have to. And so, like, I've, you know, whatever made a little bit of ruckus about that you know here and there on like some panels or whatever like right to the fda like why do you allow people and they would kind of just dodge the question you know I'm like really yeah. are we in politics now you know so it's yes it's- that's exactly it i mean they're getting their pockets lined somehow to make that more accessible to a larger group of people that, yeah. that want to fill 
shelves, you know? Yeah. So I'm sure they're getting there. They're getting it somewhere on the back end. I, yeah. I have no doubt. Yeah. And, that, and it's just another, I mean, it was, that was one of the reasons why I got into the food industry. I mean, I loved eating and I was turned on to good food at a young age and it's creative, you know, it's artistic. There's the end, the same thing. I love being around people. This is the, not being able to shake hands with people. And I mean, this is what I do. You know, I stand on right. Prospect Avenue and I'm like, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> and it's fucking killing me right now, man. I can't fucking hug people and shit. I mean, it's yeah. a good thing that I got so many kids because I just like, yeah, right, I right, come right, home right. and I hug them and, and we do jujitsu at the house. So I'm getting my, I I'm saw, I saw you, you you're getting all yeah, your workouts yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm trying, I'm trying to stick to my routine as much as possible gotcha. because you know, like you, the same thing we just said. I mean, it goes, you know, personally as well, like whoever, you know, whoever can keep chipping away at it and doing this when, when, when the clouds part, those are the people that are going to be poised to, to make some moves. And that's how I feel about everything in life. You know, I just, yeah. I'm always trying to go after it. And uh, whether it's just a personal goal that really gives me no monetary benefit or, or, yeah. or something that does something that's really great. So. I mean, you're, you're able to keep people employed and, and, and that's, that's a big part yeah. too. Not just you. It's like the people that depend on you to keep it going. Exactly. Right? Oh, that's, that's been one of my major, I mean, for keeping Della open, the main thing was definitely my, my staff, my guy, most of my staff has been here since we opened almost five years ago. That's a phenomenal retention rate for a restaurant. Huge. And, uh, and, and I just, they're my family. Like we spend Thanksgiving together. We spend Christmas together. I don't go see my parents. It's all of us. We get together and we have a big meal. Like sometimes my, you know, I have family that comes in to spend it with them. And yeah, that's how I'm treating it. And that they've been, my guys have been such an inspiration for me because there are definitely times where I'm like, man, I don't know about this. And, <laughs> and I talk to them and I'm like, nah, man, we got this. Yeah. Right. It. Right. As long as you're all in together, you got that crew. You just need yeah. that crew. You know, that ride or die crew. All right. We're going to take one more short break. We'll be back in just a few, guys. You're listening to the Entrepreneur Web.